the, the thing I got to tell you, and this is really important, uh, and this is going to rub people the wrong way, but I don't care who you are or what you do out there. I don't care what kind of plant-based program you run or what kind of program you run. You cannot beat my surgery results. There is no way that you can beat my surgery results. Can't do it. Won't even come close. Not only won't you beat it, you won't even come close. There's reasons why that's the case, all right? I mean, diets don't work. We know that, right? There's a great article that was in New England, uh, in uh, the New York Times by Gina Colada, where she went through all the research on diets and showed just how badly diets work. And she concluded that we need to be doing more surgery, which is weird. We weren't born with a deficit of surgery, right? But she is bringing up an important fact. There is about 15 to 17 million people in the country who could benefit from weight loss surgery, but we only do about 200,000 a year. So there's a huge discrepancy, and she was looking at that. And she was looking at the fact that diets don't work. Now, diets don't work for many reasons, okay? First of all, the ridiculous fascination we have with macronutrients. It's crazy. The problem with nutrient by nutrient science is that it takes the nutrient out of context of the food, the food out of context of the diet, and the diet out of context of the lifestyle. I can't stand macronutrients. My patients know this. Do not come in to my office and tell me that for breakfast you ate a protein because I will go crazy. And I hate it, you know, when you go and you order a salad and they're like, would you like a protein with your salad? And of course, everybody at the table who knows me is like, oh God, here we go. And I'm always like, what do you mean by a protein? My salad's got beans, doesn't it? And the guy's like, yeah. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, do you want steak or do you want chicken? I'm like, well, those have as much fat as they do protein. So you're asking me if I want fat with my salad? And the guy's like, listen, I'm 16 years old. This is a summer job. Can you just... <laughs> but it's crazy because what this does is it's created this weird low-fat versus low-carb battle right? This is the big battle, low fat versus low. What is low fat versus, what's a low fat person eating? What's a low carb person eating? This all started, interestingly, with a very good effort by the Senate. They had the Senate Select Committee on, on um, Nutrition, uh, and they were actually started to, to look at undernutrition. They found that there wasn't that much undernutrition in America, but there was tons of overnutrition, and they did this very elaborate study called the McGovern Committee, and the McGovern Committee decided that we need to eat less meat, least, less dairy, least eat less eggs. And what happened? The meat, dairy, and egg industry went crazy. Now, you can't say that. They got McGovern voted out. And actually, the recommendations, one of the recommendations was specifically eat less meat. That recommendation, recommendation got changed to not eat less meat, but eat more lean meat. And then we started talking about low fat. You know, well, lean meat means low fat meat. Let's start eating low fat. And so you could see when the low fat guidelines came out and what happened? Did, we, did it help? Are we less obese since the low fat guidelines? No. Now you gotta understand, it said eat low fat, but we didn't eat low fat. We ate more fat. We ate more of everything. We ate a lot more of these because it was reduced fat, you know, and it's vegan. So you can have your reduced fat Oreo and be healthy, right? The other thing that happens is, and you know, if any of you follow me or read my book, you know, I'm very big on what good science is versus bad science. And the low fat versus low carb science literature drives me crazy like fingernails on a chalkboard. It is such bad science. And it's set up that way. You will have the dairy and the meat industry set up studies. They set up what's called straw men so they could beat them. So here's a low fat versus a low carb study. The low carb group lost more weight than the low fat group. So therefore low carb is what we should be doing. But wait a second. The low fat group went from 35% fat to 30% fat. Is 30% fat low fat? That's not low fat. And they didn't change that much. They didn't make a big change in their diet while the low carb group made a big di diet dietary change. It's easier for a low carb group. When you tell an American, I want you to not eat your entree, just eat your sides, they're gonna be like, what are you talking about? I just gotta eat my corn, that's it? I don't wanna do that. But if you tell them, look, don't eat the sides, just eat the entree, they're like, okay, I'll eat my steak, that's fine. It's easier for them to do that. And so, that's a big difference. This study was all over the media because the low carb people love to think that if you go low carb, that regardless of calorie intake, you're gonna 
be healthier. So they did this study, and they came up with this thing, dietary carbohydrate restriction improves metabolic syndrome independent of weight loss. This is called p-hacking. So what p-hacking is, you do a study, and you investigate Every kind of, you, you set up like a million different parameters because you're looking for just that one parameter that sticks out. You can be like, aha, that parameter sticks out. I'm going to run with this and call the New York Times and get an article. And that's what they did. So they took a group of people. They put them on low carb versus a high carb diet, high carb, low fat. Now, funding, dairy. And each of the authors have the, you got, they're all funded by dairy or Atkins or Verda Health. These are all low carb things. And so they did the study, low carb versus low fat. And guess what? There was no difference in weight between the two. There was no difference in waist measures. There's no difference in blood sugar control, no difference in blood pressure. Really, there was no difference between the two groups. But they found that the HDL was slightly higher, triglycerides slightly lower, and there was, a diff there was no difference in your cholesterol level, but the LDL size was a little bit bigger. So therefore, metabolic health is better. That's ridiculous. So basically, the study showed nothing, but you guys aren't really true scientists, so you might not know that, or if you are, you would know it, but if you didn't read the whole study. And this went on the front page of all these articles everywhere that low carb is better for your metabolic health. Now, not only did they not show any difference, I want you to look, because with science, they have supplement sections in the articles. I always read the supplement sections, because I want to know, what did they actually feed the high carb group? Well. For lunch, the high-carb group, high-carb, low-fat group had cheddar cheese. They had marshmallow fluff. Marshmallow fluff. This is how bad science can get out there in order to fool the public. I mean, here, ignore this outside stuff here. Here, this guy published, he compared a study that showed people that weren't in ketosis how much fat they burned versus people that were in ketosis how much fat they burned. Oh my gosh, you burn more fat exercising if you're in ketosis, so I should do ketosis. But wait a second, now let's look at the outside. This study, 300 people, this study, five. This study, 15 to 30 minutes of exercise, this study, two and a half hours. Differences all the way down. These are two completely different groups. That's how they try to confuse you. You get people like this out there that'll actually tell you plants are dangerous to your health. Plants are dangerous to your health? How, how can anybody possibly say that? And, and he wrote a book about it. And it's got no science in it. It's not referenced like my book. But people believe it. And this whole idea of carbohydrates, it just this idea that carbohydrates make you fat just absolutely kills me. Carbohydrates... There, there's been many studies. This was a really good study that looked, it was a meta-analysis, looked over many different studies. There is no correlation between carb intake and obesity. There is none. Carbs do not make you fat. If they made you fat, the Okinawans would be fat. They eat mainly rice and sweet potatoes. That's the vast majority of their diet. They eat 85% of their diet from carbohydrate. And yet, if you look at a traditional Okinawan, they lose weight as they get older, unlike Americans where we keep gaining weight. And in fact, you might not know this, but your body can't really turn a carb to fat. It's called de novo lipogenesis. For you to take a carbohydrate and turn it to fat, you have to have saturated all your glycogen stores and then eaten so many calories that your body will then turn it to fat, and that is a very rare situation. Your body doesn't turn carbs to fat. But then, you know, it doesn't matter. All these different diets that are out there, none of them really work. I mean, here's the, it's called the A to Z trial, and they, did all, they looked at all the different diets, and over a year, what happened, they all lost about the same amount of weight, and it wasn't that much weight. Uh, you know, talking about three to four kilograms. Atkins did the best, but the Ornish diet, was it really on an Ornish diet? Again, you got to read between the lines. They were eating about 20 grams of fiber a day. That should be an Ornish breakfast, 20 grams of fiber. And they were eating higher protein than they ate before, and they were eating 30% uh, fat. So it wasn't a real Ornish diet. In fact, no one really stuck to the diet anyway, and it didn't work. When you look at ketosis, if you take ketosis patients and you put them in a ward and you study them, a lot of their, when you go into ketosis, what happens is your body gets rid of all of its carbohydrates stored as glycogen. Well, your body stores glycogen with water. So a lot of the weight loss is actually water weight. And in fact, your ability to burn fat actually slows down in ketosis, not speeds up. 
but all of these diets, they're all kind of, they're, they're, they've got bad design, they don't feed the people the right stuff, but, and Dr. Willett showed this study, but to elaborate a bit, this was a study by Dr. Gardner, where he said, I'm going to give people a very healthy low-fat diet, and I'm going to give them a very healthy low-carb diet, and let's see what the difference is, and guess what, there is no difference. Both groups eating a healthy low-carb or a healthy low-fat lost roughly four kilograms of weight over a course of a year. That's not that much. Ten pounds? Now, if you look at the studies, there were some people that did really well in the low-carb, some people that did really well in the low-fat, some people that did badly. My interest is if I took this person and put them over here, would they do well, or are these people just destined to fail no matter what diet they're doing? But that's a whole other study. The bottom line is diets just don't seem to work very well. Now, do you know what the best studied diet ever, or the study that had the most weight loss ever, was the broad study? And this was a whole food, plant-based diet. They gave the people an option of eating as much of these foods as you could possibly want, no calorie restriction whatsoever. You could eat all this you want, eat this limited, don't eat any of this. And people lost the most weight that has ever been recorded in a diet weight loss study in one year. So they lost about 12 pounds. That's good, 12 pounds is good. It's not going to cure our obesity problem, but this is treating obesity, right? There's a difference between treating and pre preventing, but that's all they lost. They lost about 12 grams. That's great, that's a great finding, it just isn't a lot. I like the idea of eating as much as you want of these diets. People have tried this for years um, and not being worried about carbs, right? As many of these carbs as you want. You can eat as much as you want. 